Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me. Stampin' Sue Creates here. Um, it is <clears throat> third, uh, no, Wednesday. Um, oh gosh, April, what is today's date? 21st, I think 21st, 2021. And um, I want to share with you a fun coaster that um, I made last night. So this is a design by Sweet Pea Embroidery. Love their designs. Here's the back. And sorry, I'm doing this like late at night. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. But I'm so excited about this design. And I've had so many people that have loved it. So let me put it under the light here. Maybe you could see. There you go. You could see it. I'm not sure if you could, if it's picking up the little bit of glitter in the wings. But um, real quick design. And it comes in all different sizes. Uh, I believe it comes, for those of you that have the 4x4 four four hoop, I believe it comes in that size. So it goes like up to maybe 6x10. Now don't quote me because along with this design, there's also a really cute design to make like a table top. And it's actually two pieces that you end up sewing together. And I have some cork ordered because I wanted to try it on cork because I think it would be really fun. But um, this one is just done with fabric. So I thought, you know, it's about a half hour stitch. So I thought, heck, why not, right? Before I go to bed, then I could go ahead and upload this. And hopefully by morning it's uploaded. Um, but I use fabric for the bottom pieces, like the base. Um, this is stitched out with the black embroidery thread. Underneath here, I used a piece. Let me grab it. Here's the piece of checkerboard vinyl, and um, I can't even tell you where I got this from because I've had it in my stash. So please don't ask. I don't. I don't remember. Um, but you can find it on Etsy stores. You can check Amazon. Check your local fabric stores. But this is a piece of vinyl, and I was making those um, little bags that you put the um, the baggies in for walking your dog for the like, poop pickup. Poop pickup. <laughs> So that's where I have that. And then the wings um, underneath all this, because there's two different layers of stitching. Um, I have some scraps. I'm hoping these are big enough. This is a silver vinyl. So we have that for, for that. And the rest is all stitched out. So um, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so I'm using my 5x7 hoop. Now, normally I've been using um, Thread Nanny thread. So I have a uh, silver color, and that is in number 704, and I have this um, yellow color, which is um, 206. And over here on the other side, I have a big spool of white that I'm using, and then this is Brother Red, Brother Red thread, Brother Red, I think that's how you call it. Um, only because I ran out of Thread Nanny. Well, I didn't run out. I'd be fibbing you if I told you that. Let me look. Where's the... Mm -mm -mm. You know, like when you want to just grab something. Anyhow, um, I would be doing a little bit of Thread Chicken if I used... Oh, here it is. If I used the black... Um, and I just don't want to end up running out. So I'll, I'll use this for a smaller project where I know that it'll be enough on there. But because this has a lot of black on the design, I'm just going to use my brother, brother, brother red, brother thread. I don't know what the name of it is. It's a very odd name, but it works well in the machine. The thread nanny is also a great thread for the machine. So I have my uh, five by seven hoop here. Now I have two different layer, two layers of um, mesh uh, cutaway stabilizer in here. Um, only because there's a lot of stitching, a lot of pulling, and I don't know if I read on the instructions that came with the design, but um, I just thought I would use two. Um, I think it gives it nice, nice stability. I mean, after all, it's a coaster, and then you're also going to use a piece of um, a batting. So I have Mormon Natural. I always buy that. I love Mormon Natural. All right. So um, let's open the top up. 
<laughs> oh, I already have my color in there. All right, so I must not have used this one. Um, I used a little darker one. So when I take that off later, I'll tell you what it is. All right. Sorry, and I keep yawning. I probably should have waited. No, I can't do it tomorrow night. Can't do Friday. All right, we're just going to do it tonight. All right, so um, let me get you in here as close as I can. And um, hold on. All right, I think that looks that looks good to me. So, um, all right. Okay, so first off we're gonna do, let me hit the embroidery. So again, this is 27 minute stitches and it's 14,579, uh, for, 27 minutes, 14,579 stitches, okay? All right, okay, so we're good. So we're gonna do placement line first. And the machine was kind of acting up a little bit yesterday, so I'm not sure if I may have to change the needle. Um, fingers crossed. But this is just like doing a live video because I don't do any editing. And um, I, you know, as things happen and we come across issues, we learn together, right? So there's a placement stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and take my warm and natural batting. And um, don't throw away any of your scraps. If you do quilting, or maybe you know somebody that does quilting, ask them for their scraps, because they come in handy. You don't need a whole lot. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch this down. And then we're gonna trim around that. I'm going to unclick this. Now, um, I've done a lot of videos, and I try to do everything in front of you. Sometimes things are almost impossible that you cannot do, but I'm going to make it my best effort to trim in front of you because somebody made a comment. I mean, it was one comment that was kind of like, oh, I wish you would have, you know, showed us how to trim it. I mean, it's just trimming around, just cutting around. So um, it may not be the best view, but I'm going to cut in front of you, literally, to show you. So see, I'm just cutting around, holding this up. Um, I really didn't think it was a big deal, but apparently it was. Try to do my best to share with you the steps. I mean, my desk is only so big. This is a huge embroidery machine, by the way, and it takes up almost my entire desk. I probably have maybe nine inches on the left-hand side. The right-hand side has a few inches, but otherwise the desk is full with the machine, so there's not a whole lot of room. And I don't want you to have to feel as though you're getting dizzy with me having to move the camera a lot. So, I do my best. So, if you have negative comments, think before you put them in. I'm not trying to be nasty or anything, I'm just saying, just saying. All right, so I'm gonna put this in my base fabric and I'm gonna go ahead, this is gonna stitch out the design of the um, outline of it. So now we're going to go ahead with the um, stitching of the design. So we have three different spots on here that it's going to do like almost like a honeycomb. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the same thread in and it's going to do the stitching. It's going to be only one minute. So this is a quick stitch. This is very fun to make. It's easy to make. Anybody can do it. All right. Even if you, know, you don't have to do any additional sewing because everything is done in the hoop, which is what... I-T-H means is in the hoop. So everything's done in the hoop. Easy peasy, right? So it may be a little hard to see this. And it probably should have done a little darker fabric. But I'm actually making these because somebody contacted me that um, 
I showed the one I made last night and they're like, oh, I need to have it. Can you make me two, please? So um, I want to make them all the same uh, for a person, person that ordered them. So that's, that's what we're doing. But um, I have a lot of other, other ideas to use different fabrics with this to really make this, you know, your own take on it just by the choice of fabric you use. And this is just fabric I got, um, I believe it's from Joanne Fabric. I may have bought it through someone on Etsy, and, um, but it has Joanne Fabric on the selvage. All right, so we have, let's see, one, yeah, one more spot with two more little honeycomb shapes. But the, um, the, the larger one for the center of the table, that was really cool, but um, I have to wait for my materials to come for that. So, uh, if you're not yet following me over on Facebook, check me out on Sweet Bee Embroidery. I will put a link down below. Well, I will put the name of what my, um, what my, uh, Facebook pages. Okay, so next step is going to be the outline of the bee. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this fabric in there. It's going to be covered over anyhow. So it's going to stitch um, just the outline to show you where to put the fabric. So this, on this case, we're using vinyl. So it's the body of the bee. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and um, put our bee body down. Bee body. Bee body. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I know. I crack myself up sometimes. All right. I think that is going to be good. Now I'm going to, let's see, how does the body go? Body goes, yeah, pretty much almost straight. I'm just going to go ahead and do this straight. I'm going to leave that yellow uh, thread in there. And this is going to stitch that down. Then we're going to have to cut around um, the vinyl. I've seen a lot of different people on the Sweet um, Sweet Pea uh, Facebook page. They have a Facebook page as well. And um, everybody's been posting on there their samples. Now see, this is where I have to kind of get in there and do a good job on my trimming. But I'm going to bite the bullet and kind of leave it here. So if you want to watch me trim, which is... Nothing fun or exciting, but I aim to please everyone. I may have to bring this up closer to myself because um, it's hard to see. All right, let me just cut that off. All right, see, so I have to take it out of frame just to do a little closer trimming so I can see because I don't want to have any excess hanging off when it goes and does the uh, satin stitch around it. All right. Okay. All right, I guess that's about as close as I'm going to get. Okay, so next we're going to do is the uh, little stripes that are on the body of the bee. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that same yellow thread in. It's just so fun to make. Um, bees seem to be very popular anymore. And of course, you know, I'm the Sweet Bee Embroidery. And my um, team with Stampin' Up, we are called the Sweet Bee Stampin'. Sweet, wait. Sweet, Sweet Bee Stampers. Gosh, I had to think about it. And I use my name in the Sweet Bee Stampers. I put S-U-E-W-E-E-T, Bee Stampers. But, um... <coughs> Sweepy embroidery is um, pretty much done the same way. So this does those little lines, you know, that a bee would have on their body. Little, I guess, I don't know, those of you that are familiar with bees, this 
kind of reminds me somewhat of a bumblebee because of the yellow. In this case, kind of a goldish, orangey yellow. So those are usually those big bumblebees. Now hornets and that, ugh, I don't like those. No offense to the hornet people out there. Um, bees are kind of cute when they're, you know, stitched. Um, I'm just, I'm not a fan of real life bees. I have a few little horror stories that happened to me as when I was younger. Oh, it's probably as I was an adult as well. With bees and getting stung and not on my top 10 love list but as far as cute bees I love bees and I know they're very essential to have um, in gardens and flower beds and all that so hats off to the bees right and they're just cute and this is just uh, such a cute little coaster to have you know the summer months are coming we'll be soon outside you know you sit at the, on, at the patio table how cute would this be to have you know your little glass or mug or whatever you're drinking out of sitting you know on your patio table okay all right so next we're going to do the black so we are going to have to change the thread um, this black is going to do the outline of the bee. It's going to do the legs of the bee. So we do want to change that. And always remember, like I always tell you, when you're changing your thread, to cut off from the top and then pull out the bottom the natural way. And I know a lot of us are like, oh my gosh, you're wasting so much thread. But you know what? It's a lot cheaper to waste a little bit of thread than to have a trip to the... Um, repair people so don't be stingy with your thread thread is cheap compared to how much it costs to fix one of these embroiderer machines we want to take care of them all right so here's our black this one's going to be five minutes if i knew how to do all the fancy schmancy editing i would go ahead and do a fast forward on this but, um I, I guess i could learn but i just don't have the time to want to learn so instead of that, I just kind of do chit chat with you or sometimes I'm just quiet and I don't. Um, it's, to me, it's a little mesmerizing to watch the machine do its work. And uh, always keep your fingers away from the inside of the hoop. If you find a little piece of thread that needs to be cut, make sure you hit the green button to make it stop and then take care of whatever it is you have to take care of never stick your finger in there because trust me I've learned from experience and I believe anyone that does embroidery and has, that has happened to once in their life they have learned from that such as myself and um, save you a lot of extra money by not having to make a trip to the emergency room because if you do one of those walk-in medical centers they'll only give you a tetanus shot to send you to the hospital an expensive little endeavor um, last year that I learned. Although it does make a lot of uh, talk at the orthopedic office the following day when they want to see the x-ray and, you know, that needle, you would think that that is not sharp, that needle will go right through your finger, through the bone, and out the other end. So, trust me when I say so, okay, we're doing the little legs. I guess that's what you call them, legs, right? They have four little, four little legs. Um, and then um, the front of it, which is done later, it has the little antenna in the front. And I guess it's two other little leggies. I guess they're called legs. I don't know my anatomy of the bee. I just think they're cute. machine is a, if you haven't been following me, if you're brand new here, this is a Brother Essence. It's an Inovus BE, let me double check, BE 2300. So it's a little bit more, um, a few steps up from your basic machine. And if you're just getting into embroidery, my suggestion is start with at least a 5x7 hoop size. 
Um, they pretty much all do the same thing, just depending on the size of the hoop. And the more expensive they are, the more bells and whistles they have, and the more extra things that they can do. But this machine has been servicing me very well. I'm very happy with it. And, um, you know, my next step up would be a more commercial machine. But, um, that's down the road some. Still making payments on this. So by doing the YouTube channel and, um, you know, selling some of the things that I create, it helps to pay off the machine. Because if you have good credit, um, or trade in. You can use if you have a, an, another machine that you want to trade in to go up. You know, you can go ahead and do that. This machine I purchased from Pocono Sewovac. They're located in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. And I highly recommend them. They also will ship, they do shipping. So ask for Fred because I told them I will mention where I got this machine from. And they are very nice people to work with. They listen to what your needs are. They repair them there as well, service them. And sometimes you can even get yourself a secondhand machine if you, you know, you're a little low on funds, which is understandable. You, know, you can give them a call and see if they have any trade-in machines that people have, you know, traded up. And um, they'll service it all before you get it by getting a trade-in from them. And um, You'll be very happy with their service. So I'm just doing the outline of the bee now. It's going to be satin stitch. I have a lot of um, fun designs that I've been working on lately, and um, I got to get back into doing the videos. I've been kind of a little busy um, with my Stampin' Up business because we're right in the transition phase right now with Stampin' Up with um, things retiring and a new catalog coming out in May. So I've been kind of tied up a bit with that and um, doing my Facebook lives for Stampin' Up. So, and then just life in general and, you know, the weather, well, the weather was getting nicer where, you know, probably should cut my grass, but heck, today um, it was raining and then I looked out the window at work and then it was snowing. Ugh. And then it was raining and snowing and then went back to snow and then ended with rain. That was just a crazy day. So even though it's toward the end of April here in northeastern Pennsylvania, we're still getting a little bit of Mother Nature shooting us some still some wintry weather. They were calling for a frost tonight, so I'm kind of happy I didn't get my hanging ferns from my front porch. Um, although I did clean the porch off, oh, about two weeks ago, and I got new cushion covers for my love seat that I put on my porch. And got a new carpet for out there. I was all excited because two weeks ago, it was like summer weather. Got my porch partially set up. I have two things I want to use some spray paint on. And it, the weather just has not been cooperating for spray painting. So, um, haven't really, I sat out there the first night that I ended up putting the love seat out there. And I have not sat out there since. All right, so next step is going to be our wings. And I think for this, I'm going to go ahead. Um, let me think. Now, I'm going to need the white for this. So let me, my dog was in here, but I guess she was wondering who I was talking to. She saw that no one was here, so she probably left. She's like, who are you talking to? Talking to herself. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use my white. Um, oh, wait, I have to put it through the spool holder. I have like this big spool over on the side. I have a spool holder that I got through Amazon. You also can get it through um, Thread Nanny if you go there to get your thread. Um, hold on. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be in the way here. I just, there's just sometimes no way to prevent that. All right. I hope that threaded good. And it'll let me know if not happy with it. <clears throat> All right, it's hard to see the white. <coughs> okay. Whew. Allergy season is upon us. I went today to get my hair cut. I have not had my hair cut 
since um, I'm thinking November November and it's April so I kind of did some little trimmings myself you know how we all do that well I'm not a hairstylist and by any means but um, I did manage to do a few little trimmings so it's just been so hard to get in there I just go to like one of those walk-in places all right, now I'm going to be using these scraps. So let me pull this out. Then I'll continue my story. All right, this one will fit there. I think I'm going to need this little bigger one for here. Mm -hmm. Hard to see. Let's go here like this. Okay, I think I'm good. Now you can go ahead and tape them down if you feel you have to. Just going to keep an eye on it. This is going to tack down, and then of course we'll have to trim those out. Well, I will, you can watch. And let me just make sure. Ooh, I'm all on the edge there. That's okay. Oh, pick it up. Oh. Needle up, foot up. Kinda had a feeling that was gonna happen, that was gonna move on me. I'm gonna do I'm gonna trim that thread just in case. That's why you probably would wanna. And again, I'm trying to see where it's gonna go. Where you might want to, you know, put a little piece of tape there. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Ooh, living on the edge. Okay. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so now I have to trim around this. So I will finish my story after I trim. Now this I'm gonna have to take and put closer to me because it's very hard to see. And um, I'm just gonna trim around this so you're not really missing anything. I will show you when I am done, I promise. It's just hard when if I had like a black thread in here, I would have been able to do it over there, but it's just too hard with the white. And um, this you're going to see, so it doesn't really do a satin stitch around it. It kind of leaves it, um, the cut work showing. So you kind of want to do a good job at it. Okay, I'm cutting the second wing. It's much easier to take it off the machine. You know, don't take it out of the hoop, but just take it off to machine. Sometimes you have to put it up close to your face to trim around it. This is why I really prefer to do videos during the day. But, you know, that job gets in the way of everything. Who can relate to that? Okay. Let's put it under the light. See if I missed anywhere. And again, there's only so close you can get to it. Okay, I think that looks good. Um, move this back to the machine. Okay, so now it's gonna, I'm gonna keep the white thread in. It's gonna do stitching going back and forth on here. Let me just fix my thread. It looks like it's hitting something up here. All right. Okay. So, um, now what was I saying? Oh, I wanted to get my hair cut sooner, but um, you can do an online check-in. And for the past, like, two months, it seems like every time I check, like, the wait limit, the wait time is, like, an hour Sometimes 45 minutes. Oh my gosh, it's been ridiculous. So finally today I was watching it and um, at 4 o'clock I checked in before I got there and um, when I got there my name was the top name on the list. So there was someone else in the other chair and another person waiting and someone else had come in while I was there. 
But um, I don't know about where you live, but here in Pennsylvania, um, I go to a place called Great Clips. They're a chain. They're all over the place. And I mean, I've been going to them for a long time. So it's just convenient to go there when you're ready. And this morning I was like, okay, that's it. I'm ready. Um, okay, now we're going to do the other wing. And uh, they don't do anything with your hair other than spritz it and cut it. I'm like, of course I picked like probably the coldest day in April to go. And, uh, you know, she just spritzed it, which I had some product in my hair, but it came right out when she wet it. Whatever's in the bottle. It wasn't just water. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was. And uh, she's like, oh, do you want any product in your hair? And I'm thinking, honey, my hair is wet. You know, what kind of product can I have in it? And then she's asking, well, are you going to go anywhere after this? And I'm thinking, uh, I don't see any blow dryers anywhere. So I'm thinking already in my mind that they're not hair, they're not drying your hair. They're just pretty much cutting it and off you go. I went, nope, nope, I just gotta get home from work and let my dog out. And she goes, oh, okay. And, I, and then when I'm leaving, she goes, you want product? And I just like, kind of was like, well, what the heck are you gonna put in my hair product wise? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just said, no, I'm on my way home. I said, I'll just stick my head out the window and <laughs> let it dry, air dry. I said, I believe that's what you call it, air dry. Stick your head out the window on the ride home. But I got home, my hair was still wet. And I'm like, I'm probably going to have pneumonia tomorrow or sore throat. All right, I'm going to go and put the um, silver color in. And I didn't tell you what the color was. Um, maybe I did. 704, but I forgot to tell you what this one was. This one is 214, was the yellowy orangey. Okay. So anyhow, I had to come home and dry my hair. So that's why I didn't show myself because my hair, <clears throat> you'll probably be like, wow, she looks like a hot mess. All right. Okay, so now it's gonna do some detail stitching in the wings. This will be two minutes. <coughs> it's probably why I'm coughing. No, that's probably not why I'm coughing. I'm just coughing because I'm... I have a frog in my throat. You know, you get that? So anyhow, that, that's what they're doing. Well, I know the last time I went there in November, they were doing the same thing. Um, they weren't drying your hair or doing anything with it. And uh, I forget what the price was that she told me. Now, granted, I mean, you've seen my hair. I don't have very long hair, although it's a little bit longer now than normal. But I think last time, they wanted to charge me like almost like $25. And I had a coupon for last time, so it only cost me $8, no, $7. And then, you know, you get the tip. So. But, um... I was kind of like last him, like, really? I mean, they don't wash it. They don't do any kind of product in it after they cut it. They don't dry it. You know, they don't do anything. And it was costing me more than when I used to have the full treatment. I don't know. I don't get it. I guess that's how some other people, um, and my dentist, I don't think, does it. I don't think. But some people were saying their dentist charges an extra fee because they have to use personal protective gear while doing it, your teeth. I'm like, really? Isn't that a part of like their whole thing? You know? It's a crazy world. going to be doing putting the black back in again that looks cute this is where you can see like there's a little piece there i probably should have cut on the wing you know i'm not sure if i can get in there and trim that oh, oh. Oh. there we go <laughs> i did it all right so now we're going to put the black back in and we're going to do the head of the bee but anyhow, it's just a rip-off anymore. Anywhere you go, no matter what you have done, everybody has to add their extra fees. 
for personal protective gear and I don't know, whatever else. I guess they can, they can charge, they will. Oh, my dentist doesn't do that, as far as I know. Right, what is sticking here? Something is sticking. It's sticking on my spool. It's a sticker from the spool. All right, let me start that over. So when you have a new one and it has that little sticker in the center there, that got stuck on the um, spool pin. Oop, sorry. Close quarters here. No, we weren't having an earthquake. Oh, there's the sticker. We are just having a stamp of Sue quick. Okay, so we're gonna go with the black. And again, this design is from Sweet Pea. So you can do a search for Sweet Pea, and I believe their website is SWPEA or something. It's a, ooh, it's abbreviated. I don't know what that was. Something fell here on my desk. Or just for me leaning on it. I don't know. Um, anyhow, um, that's where you can find this, and I forget what it's called. If you just do a, a search on their website for posters or B, you know, like B E E B. You'll find it. I think it was twelve dollars um, for the the coaster and the um, table topper, and all the different sizes come in it. And then depending on what kind of rewarding machine and the type of design that your machine takes, like the brother takes the PES, it has all the different file types to come with it too. I mean, you know, if, if you, um, you may think, oh, $12, that's a lot. But when you think of how many different designs come with it, different sizes come with it, and if you were to make these and sell these, you could, you'll easily get your money back in no time. Or, you know, create gifts, you know. You could probably even somehow personalize it if you wanted. You know, maybe put a little something down here. You know, you can add to it. You have to have a software program in order to do that. Um, and I use Imbrilliance. Um, I'm not very savvy with Imbrilliance, um, but it's easy to use. And I have used it to um, merge different files together. So um, I would recommend Imbrilliance. But, you know, check out. There's a lot of the other ones out there. This just, like, brings the character to the bee once you do this head part. Otherwise, it's just a headless bee. Alright, so this is four minutes, and then um, I'm going to do something for them. Oh, then we're going to do um, the other piece underneath it, and then we'll trim those out, and then the final stitch all around, and then we're done. Show you how that's all done and um, yeah anybody would be thrilled to get this you know these make great teacher gifts if you have kids in school that you're looking for something different you know you could pick up like maybe you you do work with your with a cricket or a die cut machine or something you can make a coordinating bee mug and give the coaster and maybe some yellow candies or some kind of little treat inside the cup and wrap it up in cellophane. And what a great little gift that would be. All handmade by you. And these are things you can't, you can't buy these things. You know, if you want to buy these in the store, like where they're made and who knows where, you can pay a lot of money for them. But when they're handmade, you know, it just it has so much more meaning to it than a store-bought item. And you can personalize it. You can make it whatever fabric you want it to be. I've seen samples made with the fabric was a floral design. And that was really cool. But, oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. After I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to upload it. And hit the sheets and go to bed. Because 5.30 comes early tomorrow. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. I love that little gingham in there, that little gingham check. Okay. Let's cut 
cut this. We're going to bring that yellowy orange back in again. Let me thread the machine and then I'll show you about adding the backing on. But these machines with this self threader, oh my gosh, they are a lifesaver. Especially this one with the automatic one. Like usually the other machines I had, you had to press down the lever. This is just like boom, bing, bong, boom, done. Love it. Okay, so now what you can do now is you can go ahead. If you wanted to cut this out now, but eh, I recommend doing it all at the same time. So I'm going to take another piece of my same fabric. I'm going to flip over to the back. And I'm going to, and I know I am very generous with my fabric, but um, I like to play it safe. So, I'll, you know, if I have to lose a little bit of fabric, so I do. Now, um, the best tape I have found that works with my machine is um, this medical tape. <clears throat> so I am going to tape this down. One at the, oh, sorry, I keep hitting you guys, I'm sorry. One at the top and one at the bottom so that when I flip it, you know, my fabric isn't going to move. But you can kind of see it through there. All right, so put that on. Back of the machine. Just take a little peek underneath. Yep, it looks good. Okay. And I apologize for hitting the camera. Just very close quarters. This is going to stitch around, so this is going to add your backing. And your backing is going to be um, wrong sides together. So when you flip it over the right side, you will see. All right. So now we're going to trim this out. Now I like using these curved scissors. I also have the applique scissors, but I kind of got used to using these. And um, I really like them. Okay, so again, I'm just trimming out. I know you're going to be, don't leave your nasty comments. I can't see. Well, if I can't see, then that's a problem. If you can't see, then you'll see when I'm done. But all right, so I'm just holding, pulling this up as I'm trimming right up to the line. And it helps when you pull it up. It just makes it easier to cut. These are all straight lines, so easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? So there's that. Now don't forget, you want to flip it over. I'm gonna do the same on here, and this is where it gets tight because then you got to get under there. I'm gonna take my tape off. I'm gonna save this tape because you can reuse it. I was making those fabric bags. I think that might have been the last video I've done embroidery and um, I used that tape for those fabric bags as well. All right. So then the next and final um, stitch is going to be the satin stitch that goes all around. And you may be like, well, what about all that stabilizer? Well, we will cut around all that. You can use water-soluble stabilizer, the mesh water-soluble. But um, I just, I've used that a lot. Okay, so there it is there. And um, the only thing I don't like about that is when it gets wet, yes, it washes away. But also, um, it kind of wrinkles up everything if you get your, um, your coaster wet. Um, is that even in there? No, I didn't think it was. I didn't think my thread was in there. It came out. Okay. Oh, okay, close. Now I'm going to go back, start from the beginning of that. Because I want to make sure I get those, um... too far. Hmm. Okay, there we go. 
I want to make sure I get those beginning tack down stitches because they're very important. Okay, here we go. All right, now this is going to take eight minutes because it goes around a few times um, and then it has to do all the satin stitches. But after this, we're done. edges and bind the two pieces together so it looks just as good as the front as the back now if I really wanted to be fancy I would have taken my bobbin and um, made a bobbin color the same as the thread because um, on, on my sample one you can kind of see where um, I have a thread there where you can see the white bobbin coming through but I'm okay with that. It doesn't show through on the front. If it shows through on the front, then you need to stop your machine and um, check your threading because the bobbin should never show on the top. It usually means there's some kind of threading problem. Really nice tight stitches here. And I love there's a final stitch when all the satin stitches are done. <clears throat> there's a final stitch that goes around the entire design and it really makes a nice, nice finished look. So let's just take a watch and um, kind of be mesmerized by it. I find myself to be mesmerized. I'm always also listening you have a, an embroidery machine that you've been using, you get to know what sounds normal and what kind of doesn't sound so right. And as soon as you find out that there's something going on, I can't, do get that little squeak. I think it's just the um, boot rubbing, but um, you should stop your machine immediately before any type of damage is done. Join this video so if you are, if you like what you see, be sure to um, give me a thumbs up, a like, all 
always leave comments. I love to hear and I answer every single comment and um, I like to hear what, what you think of the design, you know, what all you're stitching. I'd love to hear from you. And um, if you're not yet a subscriber and you like these kinds of videos, be sure to hit the subscribe box. Next to that, you will see a bell. If you click on that bell, you can be notified when I upload new videos so you won't miss a single one. And the more that you like, comment, share, and subscribe, the better off my channel is. YouTube will promote it more to other people that enjoy the types of content that I create. And it helps me make a little bit of extra pocket money so I can continue to buy designs and buy products and things to create these videos for you. And it lets me know that you, know, you, you enjoy what I'm showing. I have mentioned before that I notice my stamping videos don't get a whole lot of views. So you'll notice I pretty much don't do too many of those. I do upload my weekly Facebook lives for those of you that enjoy the stamping. But um, otherwise it's unboxings and um, some sewing and it's a variety of things. But I do love the machine embroidery videos and I love sharing what I make. Of you also enjoy it because I get a lot of a lot of watches and that makes my heart happy so if you would like to me to continue doing machine embroidery videos be sure to let me know by doing all of those things okay we are almost done with the satin stitch and then it's going to do a final stitch all around to complete the design and then we'll be unhooking it in no time see it's a quick stitch about a half an hour and you can whip up a whole bunch of these in an evening put them together tie a little bow and like I said you know put a mug with it and make a great gift for the bee lover in your life absolutely love. the happy tune go ahead and click OK on my machine and let it go home all right so there we are there is our finished design I'm going to go ahead take it out of the hoop my goodness my heat is turning on and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take scissors and I'm going to trim all around here let me try to see if I can do it in front of you Yes, the heat is turning on. All right, so I'm gonna trim as close to the stitching as I can without cutting the stitches. I don't know if you could hear that, but my radiator is ticking, which means the heat is coming up. So to think just the beginning of this week, I was sleeping with the ceiling fan on and the window open at night. Here comes my dog, which that means I thought she was done for the night. Apparently she'll have to go out. Okay, so there is our finished design. I'll put this here so you can see. I don't know if you can see it up like this. No, it's kind of better down here. And then here is the one that I had done previous. 
Now, what would be really fun with these, if you wanted to make something like a placemat or something, you can go ahead and maybe do some of these without a design in it and, you know, put them, stitch them together. And it would be really cute to make something like that. But there we go. Quick and simple. Let me turn the camera for you a little bit so you can see. Quick and simple design. Some cute little bee coasters for you to create. Again, the design is from, from Sweet Pea. And you can find them online. Check them out. They have a lot of great designs. I use a lot of their designs. Um, they have step-by-step -step instructions when you purchase the design. A lot of times, you know, if you don't follow me with my videos, which, why wouldn't you? Um, they have a videos on their YouTube channel, and um, they're a great company to get designs from because they're done really well. And yes, I know, my dog is here, and she's looking at me with that face. So um, thank you, everyone, for joining me. I really do appreciate you being here. Again, if you like these kind of videos, support my channel by subscribing, liking, comment, sharing, and um, I will see you back here again real soon. Um, I'm thinking maybe some key fobs. How about some key fobs? Some really cute ones I've been doing, and um, I think that'd be a real fun video to do next, or who knows? All right, everyone, have a great day where you, wherever you are. Please be safe, and we'll see you back here again real soon. Bye for now.